So how did you get into singing country music? Was that what you've always sang, or did you did you fuck around with other forms of music first? Oh uh, yeah. Well, actually, I didn't really have a choice. Both my grandfathers played. Um, you know, well, actually, we're in Eastern Kentucky, where I'm originally from. Everybody really plays music, but it's it's what you do after work. You know, it's really? Like, yeah, my mom's brother, like all his friends, they had this house. And they just, there's these two t twin brothers, and, they, and both of them never married. So they turned their house in, into a fucking practice space. And they just had this PA and lights and shit that stayed set up all the time. Wow. And, and uh, so I was a real young kid, and I'd go over there and always play guitar. And uh, yeah, I mean, before I even really knew anything about music or songwriting, I think I was learning how to play in a band just from hanging out with those guys. All wow. And, uh, but yeah, it was never encouraged. You know, it was never like. You don't think, oh, I can do this for a living, if that makes sense. Right. You just do it because everybody's doing it. Right. And um, nobody thinks they're going to leave that situation. Or or for many other reasons, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, uh, it is what it is. But So, yeah, dad's dad was a big bluegrass guy, played mandolin, and just shoved that shit down my throat, I mean, repeatedly until I accepted it. And then mom's, my other grandfather, he was like a big Merle Haggard, Marty Har Robbins guy, and had an old Gibson, a very beautiful voice. Um, he, he he probably more than anybody. We'd watch Hee Haw and shit when I was a kid and TNN, and he'd kind of tell me which of the guys were actually playing and, and the ones that were just holding the guitar as a prop. Oh, wow. Or, uh, you know. Um, yeah. And, like, Roy Clark and Jerry Reed and guys like that. Were huge. I mean, I, yeah, I knew by the time I was five. Like, I didn't give a fuck about anything else ever. Wow. Uh, school. I could have dropped out of school in third grade. It would have been the same <laughs> result, you know. Um that's interesting. So you're kind of groomed, you know, in at least way. in the music sense, but not maybe in becoming a professional. Right. Yeah, without knowing it, maybe. Because um, I'd never really played in many bands. Um, but yeah, I had an older cousin, Mike, too. He was like six or seven years older than me. So, you know, just older teenage neighbors with Chevy Novas and shit listening to Guns N' Roses, when, <laughs> you know, when you're in fifth grade. But Mike really... I remember very vividly one weekend, we'd go up to visit, they had a farm in Ohio, and uh, I was probably in fourth or fifth grade, and he, he said, I remember he knew I was really into music, and I was playing guitar already, and he's like, what are you listening to? And I don't know, I mean, it probably was the Monkees or something, and he took me to his bedroom, and he had one of those, like, tower stereo systems with the glass door and the, oh. the super headphones, and he sent me, and CDs had just come out, you know, this is like 87, 88, I don't know. And uh, he just had this, already had this fucking mountain of CDs. And he's like, here. And it was like Zeppelin box set and Cream and Hendrix and uh, Humble Pie and Traffic and all these bands. I mean, it was like a fucking bomb just went off in my head. Wow. And that was it. I was done. My, my life was ruined. I re very clearly remember the transition between records and CDs. I remember the fir very first CDs showing up at the record store because... Kids today probably don't even appreciate it because of the last 10 years of the internet has dominated digital downloads ever since mm -hmm. Napster came along and then iTunes and everybody knows how to get shit online and there's no record stores anymore. Obviously there's a few, but I mean, it used to be like a local community spot. Well, I lived in Newton, Massachusetts and we used to go down to this place that was right across the street from a place that I worked at. I worked at this... Um, ice cream place called Newport Creamery. Uh, we made hamburgers or washed dishes and did all that shit. And uh, across the street from Newport Creamery was the record store. All kids would go there after school. It was our own cultural, it was the only like output to like the, the rock and roll of the world. But you wanted, every week a new record came out. You yep, know, so you had, yep. You had to be like, mm. And I remember when the CDs came out, everybody's like, what is this? Right. What the fuck? Look at it, it's got a rainbow in it. If you wiggle it, it makes rainbows. Well, the digital thing, I think, in a lot of ways, it's great, but I, I blame it almost entirely for the downward spiral of, you know, the quality. Of music? Yeah, I mean, the 70s, man, if you if you got a record deal, you had to be bad the fuck ass. You right. know, you could, there was no slop. Right. Um, pro Tools and shit to go in and make everybody, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, but, right. Actually, there's a quote Pig said in the studio. He's like, you know what they used before Pro Tools? And we're like, fucking pros? <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something a guy named Pig would say. 